darlings, welcome to a brand new vlog. It's a glorious, beautiful spring morning today. And last night <laughs> was the first episode of Gardener's World 2024. So spring is officially here now, <laughs> hallelujah. Um, it's Saturday, so we're gonna have a really nice, typical Saturday. We actually don't have a huge amount of plans this weekend, which I love, <laughs> it does mean more gardening. Um, but today in an hour, I'm gonna head, no surprises, to do Reforma Pilates. And then we're actually meeting some friends for breakfast or brunch after Pilates. So a nice start to the day, and then I'm gonna get on with some gardening. I've got a little bit of unboxing I want to share with you today. Actually, two sets of unboxing. I've got some gorgeous new spring fashion pieces to share with you a bit later on. And I've also got some like home and miscellaneous bits. So I'm gonna get started by showing you a few of those bits that arrived at the weekend. This is a selection of new beautiful pieces from Rebecca Oodle and I love creating tablescapes and just having lots of little things that are very versatile that I can mix and match whether we're doing like a big Easter celebration which we are going to be doing this year. We've got um, lots of family coming over for the Easter weekend or even if it's just you know day to day putting a few pretty things on the table just to elevate your overall experience. So let me show you a few of the things that I chose. First of all, we do not at this moment in time, for some reason, have wine glasses that I just absolutely love. And Rebecca Oodle have got these ones, which they remind me of goblets. It feels like professors at Oxford University would chink to each other, chink, with these little, um, yeah, they are quite literally little glasses. And I think the more lovely your glass, the nicer that the wine tastes. I know it's a complete placebo, but I just love these and they feel like they look quite old fashioned as well. So they work very well in this house. So I've got six of those. Um, and then, oh, sweet. I've got a couple of other glass items, but not drinking glasses. These are, they do little sets of bud vases. I will do a little tablescape at some point, I'm sure, during the weekend, um, but a little mixture of bud vases. This one is like a twisted, blown glass, a stumpy version, a slightly taller version, again, twisted glass, and then a, almost looks like a candy shape, doesn't it? Love those. Really beautiful if you just want to go out, pick a couple of stems. You don't even need to have a garden. You can just literally forage even twigs <laughs> or branches from the hedgerow. Works beautifully. Then I've got some new napkins with a really lovely, glossy, like a sateen thread green around the edges. Again, really classic and timeless and will work on so many different kinds of table styling. I think luxurious napkins are a really good investment because you get so much use out of them. And if they're quite classic like this, go for a color that works really well with your house or with tableware pieces that you already have a lot of. For me, obviously that's green. Um, and yeah, you'll just find that you get so much use out of them. And there we go, love those. This is very exciting because these are without doubt the most fabulous, most bougie and wonderful salt and pepper grinders in the world. We do have a set similar to this. Um, we wanted to get another set so we can have one in the kitchen and one on the dining table. I just, I honestly don't think you can get a more fabulous salt and pepper set than these. The set that we've currently got, they're slightly different colours. These are obviously both the same colour. Um, they have these very retro little twisties that you physically grind your, is this salt or pepper? I think this one is salt, salt with. And they're so weighty, like they just feel such good quality. They are such good quality and they look so amazing on your table. That would be an amazing gift idea if you have been invited to someone's house and they're hosting and you want to just really provide a, the most amazing gift because they're not the cheapest in the world. So it's just a really nice thing that maybe people might not splurge on for themselves. I would recommend it, but um, yeah, love them. And they do have them on Rebecca Oodle, which is wonderful to know. Next, we have got some of the fabric placemats. I use a lot of um, the Rattan straw placemats as well, but sometimes it looks actually really nice to layer up with the fabric ones. So I'm gonna be playing around with that look. And these are coated. So I think that actually any little stains or dribbles <laughs> that land on these will kind of repel off, which is great. I just realized um, did I tell you that these were posy glasses when actually they're 
candle no i think they are posy glasses yeah but you can also get little glass candle holders on rebecca oodle as well and for my easter table i'm gonna do i think maybe green and pink candles so they do really beautiful quality candles on rebecca oodle i chose the dark green the olive green and the what would you call it like coffee color love those they look really nice all together what next what next this i'm really excited about <laughs> um because i love anything scalloped i love anything with a little twizzly edge and i saw willow crosley doing the most beautiful i think she used a little flower frog in the middle of a bowl like this and then she had anemones there's a new new type of anemone an called a crazy bean i'll pop a photo on here it's a really like wiggly stem and then with a pod at the top um and they just look amazing with hellebores and ranunculus in a frog with moss around the edge as the most gorgeous table centerpiece so you could use this for florals but also obviously use it as a salad serving bowl maybe not on the same day and <laughs> give it a good wash in between the two and obviously you could use it as fruit bowl as well they've also got it in green which is kind of on my wish list too but i thought that this would be a nice change <laughs> from all the green on my tablescapes so i've gone for this terracotta color you can never have too many matches in a house with a lot of fireplaces oh can you even see it it's just there um and i like to have matches in the dining room ready to light all the candles on the table this is a really beautiful set um pretty box and i think there's something just quite bougie about large matches <laughs> which they are so there we go and then finally rebecca oodle have some really lovely prints on their table linens and this is a new one called their hellebore print I'm a big fan of hellebores. Do you know what we'll do later today is actually open up my flower pressing device and see how the hellebores look that I pressed at the beginning of February. Yeah, so they've been in the flower press for a little while, so they should be looking gorgeous. So I need to look out in some antique shops with some old picture frames so I can frame them. But yes, I think this is gonna be gorgeous for spring and summer tablescapes and also autumn winter to be honest because hellebores, they do flower in autumn winter, but I think it's gonna be perfect for all year round. So that's what was in my order. Some gorgeous pieces. I will leave them all linked down below because I'm sure a lot of you <laughs> might be tempted by a piece or two. Um, I do have some more unboxing, but I want to have a little something to eat before going to Reforma Pilates. I know I'm having brunch later, but still. So I will catch you when we're on the way to Pilates. Again, darlings it is a few hours later now in fact many hours later it's nearly quarter to four we've been at Bamford pilating and brunching and garden center shopping I picked up some lovely flowers and I'm hoping I'm gonna get time this afternoon with the little bowl that I showed you earlier to do a beautiful flower display hopefully get a chance to do that the England rugby is on at eight o'clock and there's a few things I need to get done before that so we're just gonna get cracking as I mentioned, I have more unboxings to share with you. This one is actually from Sarah Raven. I placed an order on their website and um, I actually grabbed these as a last minute thing in order to get free shipping. They are these little grow pots and you can put your seedlings in them and the whole things will actually just decompose in the ground. So anything that has a slightly sensitive root structure, you don't need to worry about upsetting the roots because you just plant these in your beds and they'll decompose and the roots will just find their way out eventually. I have bought more seeds, but don't worry, it's not vegetables. Um, I have definitely got enough vegetable seeds, but at the same time, I know that that won't stop me buying some more. But I feel like last year, I focused so much on growing veggies from seeds that I really kind of forgot about flowers, which is not good enough. So, from Sarah Raven, I have, oh, Alexa, off. I've got these beautiful candy floss poppies. This year is going to be my year of growing poppies because they're so beautiful and actually quite easy to grow. These lovely dark, almost like a burgundy coloured cosmos. Cosmos are so fun to grow because the more you pick them, the more they grow back and we love these dark colours. 
This is another type of Cosmos. I just thought the colours in here were really pretty. Apricot. Um, this one's called a double click. And it's just very feathery with the types of petals. A zinnia. Zinnias grow really well in our garden and I like the light colours. They're also really good in cut flower displays. These, I think it's a type of poppy. Yeah, corn poppy. I've actually bought some of these from Dalesford today. And again, fantastic for cut flowers in the house. And then this is an opium poppy. Really beautiful, classic, um, deep purple poppy. So that's what I got from Sarah Raven. Free with my Gardener's World magazine. I've got some sun baby tomatoes and how do you even pronounce that? Zerocrysum? How do you pronounce that? I don't know. And also sunflowers and beetroot. I personally don't love growing sunflowers. Oh, Dickie's at the door. Come on in, my baby. Is it a bit chilly for you? Yes, I don't really love growing sunflowers, um, but I know that Petra really wants to. So I will save those for her. And these beetroot, I will actually grow as little microgreens. It did come with a little booklet, how to sow your seeds. So I might have a little perusal of that just to see if she's got any, um, any extra tips that I am not aware of. And then we've got another box here and I can't remember what else I ordered. Oh, so these are, I think they're called corms, K -K -Q -C -O -R -M -S. Are they anemones? Ah, yes, I have literally bought something that I already have a lot of. Anemon anemone corms, the bride. They are my favorite kinds of anemone. And when you get them, they just arrive like this. They're like these little brown nodules. You probably won't be able to really see them. So you can soak them in some water and then plant them up. I can do them in my little grow pots. That'll work quite well. So yeah, all about flowers today. Um, Speaking of which, so you know that I made a lot of these lovely little bulb pots. Well, as you can see, a lot of them have finished. They've gone over, especially the Narcissus. Unfortunately, obviously nothing's gonna grow back here. So what I'm now gonna do this afternoon with the help of um, Charlie is we're gonna be doing bulb planting. So we're gonna take the bulbs out of these pots and basically plant them around the garden. So next year we have little daffodils and Narcissus and crocus and muscari all of which I forced inside this year by putting them in the pots. Next year they'll just grow outside. So that is the plan of action. process that you've just seen me speeding through is basically getting my bulbs ready to be planted. So these are the bulbs um, that were in my little pots in the greenhouse or in the house. Dexie's come to investigate. So I've taken them out of the pots and then I have snipped the greenery off. The reason that you snip the greenery off is because when these go in the ground, now the energy from the bulb and the bulb is so full of energy that you almost don't even need any soil for these to grow they could just grow with a little bit of water and sunlight but now that the green is cut off instead of the bulbs energy going into um, kind of reducing the green down for hibernation time now the energy will go back into the bulb so the bulb will become bigger and stronger and maybe if we're lucky like this one here it will sprout a new little bulb so they'll actually start to multiply so our trees i don't know if you can really see but we like to put daffs daffodils and narcissus around the base of our trees it's just a little bit of optimism to look out on in the early spring and so i'm basically going to use my dibber to now create some holes around the base of the trees and pop these bulbs in the ground so next year they will come up as more daffodils so it's very circular really great way of um, reusing the bulbs and the flowers that you had in the house it's actually much better circularly wise than cut flowers i love both but this feels like such a sustainable way to garden the dogs are just having a mad moment charging around down there. I'll be doing the same for these little crocus bulbs shortly as well. You can see they're really multiplying these little fresh white bulbs, um, but I don't wanna get the bulbs mixed up even though they're much smaller. I'm just gonna start with the daffs and then move on to the crocus, but you know what? <laughs> I already need a cup of tea. So I'm gonna go in the kitchen and make that and then we shall start with the bulb planting. 
Charlie has found these lovely little pots from somewhere. I don't know where he got them from, but really nice colours that we're storing our tea in. Um, this smells like a mint and something or other from Jeeves and Jericho, which is a really nice local brand. This <laughs> is the best gardening hack of the year. Maybe second best after <laughs> using the Lee Roll tubes for growing your broad beans in. This is my ocean bottle travel mug and it is now my BFF when I'm in the garden because it's got a double walled, I have mentioned these before, but honestly, if you spend time in the garden, if you spend time on the road, if you spend time anywhere, slash if you're a slow coffee or tea drinker, this will become your best friend. It's got a double walled stainless steel, stain, stainless steel, um, lining insulation so this will keep a hot drink hot as in piping hot for four hours um, or it'll keep a cold drink cold for up to 10 hours which is absolutely incredible Charlie and I I mean our dishwasher is always full of the classic ocean bottles this was the limited edition color it's still probably my favorite it wasn't my first ocean bottle i think my first one was green um but this is the one that i always take with me to pilates it's actually got my electrolyte electrolyte water in it right now but um yeah this is where ocean bottle obviously started now they've got the travel mugs they've also got tumblers and just everything about this makes sense so it's actually 90 percent recycled stainless steel it stops you from having to get single-use cups. It fits underneath the, um, don't know what you'd call it, drip in a barista coffee machine. So you can literally make your coffee straight into this. You don't need to worry about pouring it in afterwards. Kettle is boiled, hold that thought. The purchase of this actually funds the collection of a thousand ocean-bound plastic bottles. So it really is um, a planet-saving option as well. This is the detachable lid, which if you're out in the garden flinging soil around like I'm about to do, then it stops any little bits of soil, or if you're on the beach, sand or just bits falling from trees, I don't know, stops me from getting anything in my tea, which is very important. I will actually just let it um, sit with the top off for a few moments because as you can see, it's steaming. So it's actually a little bit too hot for me at the moment. That's the one thing, the insulation is so good that you, I do have to let it, um, breathe for a little bit this little um slider you can get different colors of these so say for example everyone in your household has got one of these then you can just each have a different color slider which i think is very clever and as well as gardening i just take this around the house with me because i'm such a slow coffee drinker the amount of times that prior to this i would be putting my coffee in the microwave it was just a little bit crazy i'm such a slow drinker but this this is the solution. It's amazing. It's a tumbler. It doesn't have the handle. So say, for example, you're mostly thinking you'll use it in long car journeys, then maybe the tumbler would be better because it will slot into your car. Dexy! He's pushing around his um, dinner bowl saying he wants something else. He's already got a Dalesford Game and Pheasant with Parmesan grated on it. I don't know what more that boy wants. Um, yeah, so there's also the tumbler, and I do have my ocean bottle discount code, which I'll leave on the screen here, Josie LDN, that will get you 10% off your purchase. You can use that on the classic bottles, I'll show you the other ones that we've got as well. Charlie and I are big fans of ocean bottle, we have got so many of them. Whenever anyone comes over to the house, we always offer them an ocean bottle, whether we're going out dog walking or whatever. So this is the kind that I find really useful on the Peloton, because um, you can slurp it through this little straw top. Straw top, which is quite fun. If you stay at Straw Top Cottage, by the way, we do leave some of these in the cottage so you can borrow them when you go out on dog walks. They often bring out limited edition colours in the classic bottles, so I love this terracotta one. I often take that one into the gym with me. We love the massive ones too. They've just brought out a selection of um, more colours in these. I love the classic green. Actually, it's really funny. Um, Daisy, who we just met Tom and Daisy for breakfast at Bamford, and she had a really really chic grey ocean bottle which she'd got from Hardcore, which is where she does her workouts and I think it was this colour Charlie and I spotted in um, The Gentleman that we're watching on Netflix at the moment we spotted this when um, what's her name Susie Glass when she's in the bath in her own apartment she has one of the no not when she's in the bath when she's on the rowing machine she has one of these next to the rower so they're everywhere they are the best these you can stick in the dishwasher as well so they don't get smelly which is amazing and your 
saving the planet by um, helping collect ocean-bound plastic, preventing buying more plastic or single-use cups, so all around amazing. So Josie LDN is the code that you need. Okay, this has almost cooled down enough. So let's carry on with our bulb planting. my darlings job well done it's a few hours later my tea is still just like one degree cooler than when I first put it in here so that has worked the trick worked the trick done the trick yeah it's worked fantastic um so I was gonna do my lovely flower display in this and I've just picked some beautiful what do you call it hellebore can you see from the garden but it's gonna get dark in a minute and also I've realised I need some more moss in order to finish this, so I think I'm going to do it tomorrow. Plus, so as I mentioned, it's England Rugby tonight, um, we're having steak and mac and cheese, and last time I feel like you were all shouting at the camera, don't put your hollandaise on the Argo, because obviously it's separated, which is why um, it wasn't as perfect as when I first made it. So today I'm going to do my hollandaise, sorry, not hollandaise, bernaise sauce again. But I'm not going to put it on the agar this time and I'm going to chop up some wild garlic. So it's going to be a wild garlic bernaise that we're going to have with our steak and mac and cheese. So I'm going to head inside and prep that. So I need to get some rosemary from the garden and then we'll start making it. You're meant to make it with tarragon, but I don't have that. So we're going to use rosemary. All right, let's do some foraging. <laughs> very scruffy and very tired <laughs> that's because I am but the steak and the wild garlic bernays were an absolute triumph I will definitely be doing that again we are watching the rugby now England versus France we're not doing too well at the moment it's half time and I'm just going to take my makeup off I might actually not watch the second half I'm kind of in the mood for using my big Dermalux doing a proper LED um, so I think that's me for the rest of the evening. I have realised that I actually have shot two days, um... <laughs> Sounds like England are back in the game. <laughs> Charlie is so vocal when watching the sports. Um, yes, I've realised that I've filmed two days and I've actually not put them in any vlogs yet, so I'm gonna leave you with some footage of a lovely day that I had in London and then also a few clips, I didn't film very much, but a few <laughs> clips um, of the lovely uh, Cheltenham Gold Cup day with Holland Cooper, so I'll leave you with that my darlings, but for now, good night and I'll see you in the next vlog. My darlings, it is ooh, cold and rainy, just how we like it. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I'm heading into London today and um, because of said rain, I just bun zero effort with the hair because there's just no point. <laughs> Plus it allowed me to have an extra 15 minutes in bed today. 
I've got a couple of meetings and a really nice lunch event. I might see if I can get my nails done somewhere. It's not been that long since my last appointment, but I really at this stage need um, a builder gel or a strengthening because they're all starting to snap off. I think because they're getting long. Um, so that would be ideal. This morning I grabbed one of my oldest handbags to bring with me. This is the Mulberry Bayswater in the shade Rosewater. I think it's the Rosewater colour. I wonder if I can tighten that because that's kind of annoying how it's not straight across. But this was, this was um, one of my first designer handbags and for those of you that have joined me in the last eight years, <laughs> you may not know, I used to work for Mulberry, I was in their marketing team and it's always been a really special brand for me. Let's bring back the Bayswater. I'm sure a lot of you probably have one of these or the classic with the flap over and they're just fabulous. They really hold their style, they hold their shape. Um, some of them, some of the really soft leather ones, they do go a little bit floppy, but I managed to fit my laptop in here. I've got my makeup bag, I've got my water bottle, got my umbrella. Um, so yeah, very, very practical bag. It's a really great size and it's got a zip over the top. If I can find any of these on any like secondhand websites, actually, I wonder what the latest Mulberry version is. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to run for my train. I really don't want to get out of my nice warm car. It is just so miserable. Oh, come on, spring. Where are you at? Well, this is positively delightful on the plus side. Getting to put my new Holland Cooper brolly to the test. Oh, how miserable. First meeting of the day here at the lovely Chilton Firehouse. They do a great breakfast. my lovely lunch event with Ule and I realised I was across the road from the attendant coffee roasters, also across the road from Leica where I was um, last week for the camera course and somebody actually sent me um, a DM saying that they have a pistachio latte here so of course I have got to go and try it out. Okay finally a little bit of face to camera time. I'm in a taxi now for my last appointment of the day. I thought we could do a little taste test together of the pistachio latte. I have to say I'm a tiny bit disappointed. I don't know what I was expecting. I was like expecting him to crush and squeeze some pistachio nuts in front of me when actually it was just a pistachio syrup. So I'm imagining it's going to be like a sugary coffee just with a little hint of pistachio but that's just the energy kick that I need this afternoon. Yeah I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe pistachio milk or something. It's just a regular oat milk latte but with pistachio but let's give it a go. Oh it's not very nice. It tastes like a Starbucks coffee. That's such a shame because attendant coffee is normally really nice. I think since I stopped having like lots of really this is such a lie. I was about to say artificially sweet things, but you should have seen Charlie and I on Sunday. We literally ate so many petrol station sweets, like um, those foamy drumstick things and Skittles. So I absolutely haven't, but maybe since I stopped sweetening my coffee, my taste buds have changed and sugary syrups are just not something that I love anymore. I will drink this <laughs> because I don't want it to go to waste and I need the caffeine on a rainy afternoon after four back-to-back -back meetings um, and one more to go, but yeah, sadly I'm a little bit disappointed. At least I'm honest. <laughs> I could have said it was great, but that would be lying. Lula chose very well for her dinner. What do you have, Lula? Pasta a la vodka e frutti di mare. Frutti di mare, sì. E dove la stazione? Frutti di mare. Wow!